let's get busy. Let's get busy. Look, I'm gonna um we're gonna start off in Galatians chapter two. Last uh week we played around with Galatians uh chapter one, and uh we learned a whole whole lot there, and we kind of went off on a tangent about some things in the spirit, and I wanna unpack some things in terms of um just uh, I want to unpack some things as it pertains to authority and uh, also uh, this Sunday, if you get a moment, please, please go back and listen to Sunday's message. Um, our sound is not necessarily the best, but you will truly get the context. If you go back and listen to that message, um, you're going to get a you're going to get a heart full, uh, a head full and a hand full of, uh, of words. So if you get a moment, go back to this past Sunday. And I want to just play around just a little bit with that today. Um, real quick, I'm going to pray. And then we're going to get right into this word. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. We just thank you for just being so, so, so good to us, Father. We thank you for being a master of our souls, ruler over our lives, God, savior. Father, we just thank you, good, good daddy, for who you are in our lives. We so love you. And Lord, just forgive us right now, Father, uh, for whatever we may have done. Uh, and more, most importantly, Lord, forgive us if we didn't mention you in our thoughts, mention you in our in our words, mention you in our heart. Just a pure not mentioning you, Father, would you forgive us? But right now, Lord, we utter in, in our phonetic language, Father, we say thank you. We glorify you for who you are in our lives. And Lord, we just ask you to have your way tonight. But however, whatever you want to reveal, reveal it. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. God bless y'all. Last week we talked about Galatians, but then we kind of jet over uh, over to another topic a little bit about kind of the Holy Spirit and how he falls. And, and to be honest with you, man, um, it was just it was just amazing to be able to just uh, be in God's presence and seeing what he had to reveal to us. So tonight, let's see what he reveals to us, to us tonight. Amen. As you guys are jumping on, um, I'm in Galatians chapter two, verse one. Um, remember just kind of uh, last week, we learned that uh, Paul was writing this letter to Galatia and he was revealing to, he was revealing to us his apostleship and, um, and, he was just giving us information about who he who he is. Not only that, he also gave us information that the gospel that he gave to us uh, is direct came directly from God Himself. It was through revelation. He didn't have to go convert with anybody. He didn't go converse with anybody. He didn't go and he wasn't taught by someone. He didn't have a whole lot of teachers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, th this this revelation that he got from God came from God, yes. and that he was also uh, amazed at how soon that the church that he planted, the church that you know he got started, had turned to another gospel, which wasn't another gospel, but it was Judaizers or it was individuals who were uh, who still wanted to push the law mm -hmm. on Gentiles came and they began to speak this false doctrine or this false gospel and paul set the record straight for us in galatians chapter number one um letting us know uh, uh that 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 no one not no one is authorized to change the gospel mm, that's right. that's that right. no one is authorized to turn to change the gospel not an apostle because he said not me yeah he said not me or an angel right. in heaven right so no one's authorized to change the gospel. So that means that a hundred years from now or 500 years from now, the gospel should be the same, that nobody is authorized to change it. I want to, I want to play real quick now that I have my screen up. I want to play just a little bit with you guys um, about the apostle speech piece right here. It's very important because uh, I hope, I hope you guys can see this. Um, I'm 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 in the Holman dictionary here and I want to pull this up real quick. I want to change real quick. Pull that up. Let me see if they can let me. Let's do this. Oh here. 
Um, so I want to pull this up so, so you guys can see what I see and you guys can see where I get some of my information from. What I'm going to do is I want to know if you guys can see this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change this. You guys like the new technology? I do too. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want you to see this. Just a couple things that I want to highlight here. It says uh, 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 the, the apostles. Uh, uh, it, it, it derives of the Greek word um, apostolis. All right. One who is sent. <laughs> This is what an apostle is, is someone who is sent. Um, um, apostolos was used to refer to ship or a ground of ships. Later, it, it uh, designates a bill or invoice or passport. Po passport is something that is to be sent. Th this is what the term comes from, right? The Greek word. But in the New Testament, as you guys can see here, the New Testament, apostle has three broad uses. Okay. So let's follow these uses. This is what an apostle is. First, it is referred to the 12 whom Jesus chose to train for the task of carrying his message to the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. The task of carrying his message to the world. And, and then watch this. Following his resurrection, Jesus commissioned them for this task. So he trained them. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm just going to highlight this thing here. So. He, he, number one, he trained them, right? Oh, yeah, there you go. He trained them, right, to, to carry his message to the world. And then following his resurrection, so this is, be, so after the resurrection, Jesus then commissioned them. I'm going to highlight that. Mm. So they were, with, so an apostle uh, in this particular term was somebody who was trained by Jesus mm -hmm. and then somebody that saw him after his resurrection and then was co commissioned them for the task, right? These men had been with Jesus from the beginning of his ministry and were witnesses to his resurrection. Somebody say apostle. Apostles. 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 All right, that's an apostle, yes, right? Uh, uh, these men had been with Jesus from the beginning of his ministry and were witnesses to his resurrection, mm -hmm. all right? We get that beginning of his ministry and witness the resurrection. Now, Paul, okay, it says Paul, was an apostle in this sense because he had seen the risen Christ. He had seen him, mm -hmm. right? He had seen him. Now, this is that's so that's qualification number one. Right. It's qualification number one of an apostle. Qualification number two says uh, designation of the apostle is a person authorized by a local congregation with the safe delivery of a specific gift for another Christian church. What does that mean? It means that that somebody is representing you. Mm. So, who Holy Spirit? Thank you. Mm. So, an apostle, an apostle was somebody that represented Jesus Christ. Okay. 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 Jesus says this. He says, "As the Father has sent me, I send you." Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In other words, Jesus. Jesus came and he represented God. Yeah, yeah. He represented, he says that, he says, he that sent you is not greater than he who sent you. He says, he that is, excuse me, he that is sent is not greater than he that sent you. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Yeah. So the father sent the son, mm -hmm. but the son sent the apostles. You follow me? Yes. And the, the apostles represent Christ. You got me. Right. So when you re so when you see the second one is the apostle is a person author is authorized by a local congregation with the safe delivery of a specific gift for another Christian church. The third sense of apostle is those whom Jesus Christ has sent. Paul refers to a number of people as apostles in this sense. Now, real quick the third sense of apostle is those whom Jesus Christ has sent. Now, real quick, what I just conveyed to you was three. Mm -hmm. So let me convey to you number two. So I just conveyed three. It's somebody who's representing Christ. Right. Number two in this particular order is an individual who has a church who sends a messenger. So for an example, if I, right, if I were to send one of you to deliver a message to another church, 
a Christian church, you would be called an apostle in that day. But we don't call it apostle today. We call them missionaries. That's right. Mm, good now. We don't call them apostles today. We call them missionaries because missionaries go from one congregational church and you send that missionary into a place or to a, uh, 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 you know, maybe an inhabitable or a, 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 um, I don't know, a, a, an area who don't know Christ. And that missionary's job is to share the gospel of Jesus Christ or, or, or the mission is to plant a church in that area so that we can make sure that we are building the kingdom of God. But it, but, but again, that apostle is that ship, that message that is going, that is sending, mm -hmm. that is moving mm -hmm. into those areas. Okay. Mm -hmm. But again, today we call them missionaries. Right. All right. I want to show mm -hmm. you something while I have these notes up, and I hope you guys can see what I see as well. Did you have apostolic council? I don't necessarily want to go here because the apostolic council was those apostolic uh, uh, leaders who had councils back in those days that decided certain rules, mm -hmm. right? Certain rules. We you, you can really read about that in Acts chapter 15, that the apostolic councils were those who had, you know, maybe a round table. I don't mm -hmm. know what they had, right? But they discussed certain matters. Mm -hmm. They discussed certain matters that should, that we should be okay with. Like what day should we have church on? Or should we celebrate the Resurrection Sunday? Or should we celebrate Easter on this day? Mm. Mm. That was the Apostolic Council. They, can't, they made decisions to keep things in order and decide certain miscellaneous things. But I want to go right here to Apostolic Fathers. Mm. You see where it says there, I hope you can read it. Apostolic Fathers were a group of early church writers, some of whom knew the apostles. These writers were not grouped together or called the Apostolic Fathers until the late 17th century. Okay. So they weren't even called Apostolic Fathers. But we know that they were the first, second generation century fathers because they continued to carry the gospel to generations. But they, they called them Apostolic Fathers in the 17th century. Now watch this. That first collection entitled the Apostolic Fathers included the works of Clement, uh -huh, Agnet. Agnatius, Polycarp, Barnabas, and Harmat and Harmus. Other works such as the Dace or the Diagnetus and the Papius uh, often have been included in recent collections. The documents, except the Diagnetus and the Papius, were written between approximately between AD 96 and 156. Yet they were not accepted as part of the New Testament canon. Although Codex uh, uh, Sinaiticus, right, mm -hmm. which was the fourth century. In other words, some of these writings by Clement and Ignatius and Polycarp and Barnabas could and Har Harmus could have been in our canonized Bible. Right, right. These were some of the writers back in those days. They knew the apostles. They knew them. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, Clement up here, Clement was the third pope. So what, what you have to understand is in these days, this is Clement, he was the third pope. Yeah. Peter, and then you had another pope, and then you had Clement. These guys were, were, were students of the apostles, but, but no one became an apostle after uh, Peter, and after, those, after those apostles during those times. The, the, it's... In those times, historically, you can read it yourself in a Bible dictionary. That's why I brought this up, that that particular office succeeded. It, 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 it was no longer uh, valid. That office, uh, Catholicism became, is another word for church. And instead of them having apostles, they believed that that authority went on to the Pope or to the bishop, Right. In other words, or the presbytery, mm -hmm. okay? So presbytery is a bishop, pastor, and an elder, all the same word. Mm -hmm. wow. So a bishop and a pastor, same word. Wow. 
Right. Elder, same word. Wow. Right? But it was the apostolic council that as they begin to build church government, begin to decipher the different levels or structure on who sits where. It's called church government. Okay, I'm not, I'm not gonna go deep into that. I'm, I'm gonna move on. But I wanted to give you some emphasis on an apostle. The apostle was a representation of Jesus Christ. There was somebody who seen Jesus uh, when he was baptized, Oh, this is good, Holy Spirit. It was somebody that seen Jesus when he was baptized by John. And it was also when we saw Jesus being baptized in the spirit. Well, what do you mean? He was baptized by John, but he was also, it was a real death, burial, and resurrection. That's another form of baptism. You had to see him when it was a symbolic baptism, and you had to see it when it was a literal baptism. Y'all, y'all tracking? Y'all tracking with me so far? Yeah. All right. So, I just wanted to give you some concepts of what an apostle is and was back in the day. And I'm reading this from the Holman Illustration uh, um, uh, Bible Dictionary. Now, let me move on uh, real quick. Now, I got the, King, the, the new King James up today. I just wanted to give you guys that jump start as we get started. Are you guys tracking? Yes. You all right? Yes. Amen. So let's go right to verse Galatians chapter 2 and verse 1. It says, then after 14 years... I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas and also took Titus with me. And I went up by revelation. What did he go up by? Revelation. He went up by the revelation, mm -hmm. right. Right? right? And communicated to them that, that to them, that gospel, which I preach among the Gentiles. Oh my God. And I went up by revelation and communicated to them that gospel, mm -hmm. which I preached among the Gentiles. But privately to those who were of reputation. In other words, mm -hmm. those who were uh, in high places, those political figures, those that were popular, I, I, I did them privately, right? I, I went, I went there because I got to. When we preach the gospel, we got to be wise. Right, right. We trying to win you, yeah. right? We, so he went to them privately, lest by any means I may run or had run in vain. Um, so the so probably to those who were in reputations, I, I apologize. I apologize. I, I just gave you uh, the wrong interpretation there. Let me give it to you the right way. When he says, but privately to those who were in reputation, he's talking about believers. Oh. He he went to them privately to those who were of reputation, lest by any means I might run or had run in vain. In other words, I needed somebody now to make sure that what I'm saying is accurate. Gotcha. You guys following me? You gotcha. tracking? Gotcha. So I had to go to those people privately. Like, hey, yo, man, this is what the Lord showed me. Mm -hmm. Yo. Because what I don't want to do is I don't want to preach this gospel and this revelation God has given me, and I don't want to run with it, and it's wrong. It's vain. That makes sense. Gotcha. So, so when he says that, so, but probably went to the, them who uh, who were a, a reputation. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about the apostles, right? He's talking about the disciples, right? Lest by any means I might run or had run in vain. Yet not even Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. So that's awesome that we're doing a good job here because I have a Greek with me and he he doesn't believe that he has to go through the works, in order to be saved. Right. We're doing a good job by preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's not by works, lest any man may boast. May boast. It, is the, it is by the gift of God, right? right. So, so yet not even Titus, who was with me, being a Greek, was compelled to be was circumcised. And this occurred because of false brethren secretly brought in, who came in by stealth to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage to whom we did not yield submission even for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. But from those who seem to be something, whatever they were, it makes no difference to me. God shows, show, God shows personal favoritism to no man. For those who seem to be something added nothing to me. That's good. 
right. that, that God doesn't show favoritism. Yeah. That whether you are male or female, whether you're a Jew or Gentile, bond or free, it doesn't matter. God shows no favoritism. Mm -hmm. Amen? Mm -hmm. Where am I? But on the contrary, when they saw that the gospel for the uncircumcised, that means the non-Jews, mm -hmm. had been committed to me as the as the gospel for the circumcised, the circumcised was to Peter. For he who worked effectively in Peter for the apostleship. That's right there. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that again. Mm -hmm. When they saw that the gospel for the uncircumcised had been committed to me, right. as the gospel for the circumcised was, was to Peter, he who worked effectively in Peter for the apostleship to the circumcised also worked effectively in me towards the Gentiles. Amen. So the same spirit that is upon Paul uh, is upon Peter for the for the Jews is the same spirit that is up on me for the Gentiles. Right. This is so good because we have we have churches today or ministries today that does not believe that God has also called the Gentiles. Mm. And we're reading a letter to the Gentiles. Amen? Amen. It says to the circumcised whom work also worked effectively in me toward the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, and John, these are all Jewish. This is, this is James, the brother of Jesus, Cephas, as Peter, mm -hmm. and John, who seemed to be pillars, received the grace that had been given to me. They gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship. In other words, they gave them approval. Guys, I want you to stay with me. I want you to stay with me. They 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 laid hands on them. They 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 were able to have uh let me let me zoom out just a little bit so everybody can see me real quick. Let me just zoom out real quick. Hallelujah. Uh so that so that come on. Where did you go? Come here. Um <laughs> come here. Uh that right hand of fellowship, it simply means that 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 we are in partnership. We are in agreement. All right, we're in agreement. We have a partnership, and that's what that, that's what uh, uh, Paul is saying to us here. Let me go back here because I want to finish this and I want to go somewhere. To the circumcised also worked effectively. So the circumcised also worked effectively in me towards the Gentiles. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that had been given to me, they gave me and Barnabas the right hand of fellowship that we should go to the Gentiles and they to the circumcised, the Jews. They desire only that we should remember the poor, the very thing which I also was eager to do. All right. Now, verse 11, guys, I'm going to reserve to next week. I know you want to go there. You want to see some action, mm -hmm. okay. but I got to give you some revelation. Yes, sir. Is that all right? Yes, sir. I know y'all want it. We're going to reserve that for it. So remind me, I want to stay on apostleship. Okay. Because Paul is claiming that the same, that he, that for he who worked effectively in Peter for the apostleship to the circumcised also worked effectively in me towards the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. He still, this, this apostleship. What I want to do is I want to show you a couple of things that the Lord had laid on me that's kind of revelatory that I pray that it blesses you. Uh, uh, I got this on screen, but I'm, I want to go to Acts chapter 8. I want to go to Acts chapter 8. And I want to go to Acts chapter 8 because we live, church, we live in a time, hallelujah, where we, and I've been harboring this the last couple of weeks, but I need to continue to hit it home and, and touch your hearts with it. But we live in a time right now where our church age, it's coming, it's becoming silly. It's becoming a circus. Let me just say what it is. Okay. It's becoming a circus. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of church hurt that is going on. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of uh, leaders who are lording over their sheep. And there is no leader, there is no title that is your Lord but Jesus Christ. That's good. Let me look right here at you. That's good. 
The only Lord is Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. He's your Lord. Yeah. He's your Savior. He's your Redeemer. He's your healer. He's your way maker. Yes, Hallelujah. No man on earth or woman on earth is that. But what we, what we're ha what's happening is that the enemy is single-handedly trying to destroy the church because what's happening in is that the people in church are putting aren't being led to put their faith in the Lord Jesus. The people are being led to put their faith in the man or in the woman. Does that make sense? And what's what happens is the Bible says that, and, and, and I'm paraphrasing, that that man or that woman, the hand of man will fail you. Yeah. Will fail you. Don't put the Bible says this. It says, don't put your faith in man. Now it says that. Right. Put your faith in God. It is, it is not for you to put faith in man. God puts his faith in man. Yeah. You follow me? Yeah. Stop trying to be God. Don't put, your, don't put your faith in man. You put your faith in God. Yeah. Allow God to put his faith in man. Yeah. See, th this is why uh, I share this story all the time. See, when I was dating my wife, acting a plum fool, and I told her straight up, you can't trust me. I'm ready to move on. I'm ready to go. I got to break up with you. You say, I'm not trying to be saved. Mm -hmm. She says, honey, my faith ain't in you. My faith is in the God that's in you. The hope of glory. Right. See, we got to put our faith in Christ, in, in, in the, the, the God that is in an individual, the Holy Spirit that is in, in the individual. And the way you know that God is in an individual is by the works of the spirit, by the fruits of the spirit. Mm -hmm. That's how you know them. That's how you know them. It's amazing. I remember going to a, a, a gas station and it was a woman who was homeless and you could tell she was strung out on drugs and she approached me. And she approached me and she asked me if I had any money. And I said, you know, I don't have any change or anything on me I can give you, but do you mind if I pray for you? This is a true story. And she said, absolutely, could you pray for me? And I began to pray for this woman. Do you know this woman starts speaking in tongues? Jesus. She, she showed, she, she gave me a sign or she gave me some type of form of a gift of the spirit. But the signal or the sign she was showing everybody is that she was homeless and she was broken. And, and and that she was strung out on drugs. Yeah. The spirit is subject to the prophet. In other, you're not subject to the spirit. The spirit is subject to you. You can decide whether you want to use him or not. That's good. That's good. And she apparently who had this audible gift of speaking in an unknown tongue Still had her living a lifestyle. It wasn't the spirit that had her living that lifestyle. It's that she she preferred to submit to her flesh. What I'm saying to you, saints, is the spirit that God has placed on the inside of you can't control you unless you make him Lord. But if you keep making that man or that woman your Lord or your flesh your Lord, whatever you submit to, you get permission to leave. Tracking, you tracking saints. Whatever you submit to, you get permission to lead you. Let me get into this text. I want to show you something. You all, y'all tracking? Y'all tracking with me, saints? Give me some thumbs up. Give me some comments back. Y'all tracking? Give, give me some comments back. I can see you talking. I don't see y'all talking. Hallelujah. I want to get back into this word um, here uh, in in Acts chapter eight, and I want to show you something that's really. Uh, was really bad. Was really uh, uh, awesome. I want to uh, uh, check this out. So we we talked about this on Sunday. It says uh, it says, but there was this. Uh, no, no, let's go. Let's go. Let, let's tell the story. Just real quick. In this story, 
we have a, a man, a, a disciple by the name of Philip who comes into this, into Samaria. Now, Samaria is an area in which the Jews did not like the Samaritans. They didn't like the Samaritans. No, 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 no. They had no dealings with them, right? They were, to them, they were Gentiles. They were a Gentile er, uh, uh, nation because they were half bred, half Jew, half Gentile. And so they had no dealings with them. They didn't, they didn't talk to them. They didn't deal with them. Here, Philip is speaking to these Samaritans about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it says here, therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. Oh, my gosh. And then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them and the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Mm -hmm. For unclean spirits, spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed. These are the signs. These are the family. These are signs of the Holy Spirit. I said, I said, these are signs of the Holy Spirit. If you, if you're not cast, if you can't cast out devils, I, I, I'm here to tell you something. If you're, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ and you can't cast out devils, you need to pray. You need to ask the Lord for the Holy Spirit. You track it. Yeah. And you track it. Because this is one of the, uh, this is an authority you're supposed to have with somebody that's filled with God's Holy Spirit. You, you track it. So it says, for unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out of many who were, who were possessed and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. Mm -hmm. There is healing in the Holy Spirit. Healing. These, these are an examples of gifts that comes with the Holy Spirit. There's healing with the Holy Spirit. There's casting out devils with the Holy Spirit. There's speaking in an unknown tongue in the, with the Holy Spirit. There is, there is interpreting tongues in the Holy Spirit. There's wisdom in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And, and don't forget this. There's faith with the Holy Spirit. But this number one thing is make sure you love Make sure there's love because if you don't have love, none of this stuff means a thing. Amen? Amen. So this is what's going on. But then the Bible says in verse 9, it says, but there was a certain man called Simon who pre previously practiced sorcery in the city and astonished the people of Samaria, claiming that he was someone great to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying this man is the great power of God. Now, this is interesting that these people are given glory to a man. They're given glory to this man. They said that this man is a great power of God. Like this man is it. <laughs> and this is what I'm saying. We can see, we see this in ministries today where we see people, the man of God or the woman of God are being glorified over God right. or equal to God. Family, we got to cut it out. No. Your pastor isn't God. Right. Your apostle isn't God. Right. Your bishop is not God. Right. Your pastors is not, they're not, your prophets are not God. Right. They are messengers. They are gifts. And their gift is to direct you to God. Amen. Amen. Their gift is not to direct you to them. Your, they don't, what they have, it, their gift is, is merely, in, is an attraction there you go. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. to direct you. Yep. They are a sign. They are a signal. And the sign goal is to give a direction. It is a beacon to give you information of what something is. Come on, and and our job as a sign is to tell you where the father is. Come on, Come on. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right? That's what a sign is. It gives directions. 
But why are these individuals who have signs giving directions to themselves? I have to talk about that because I don't want you, as Paul said in Galatians chapter one, for you to fall victim of another gospel. Because the gospel that we preach is Christ and he crucified and he rose again on the third day. That's the gospel we preach. Amen. Let's go right into this thing. And they said to whom they, they gave heed for the least to the greatest saying that this man is the great power of God. And they heeded him because he had astonished them with his sorceries for a long time. But when they believed Philip, as he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, both men and women were baptized. When they heard the word, y'all, the Samaritans were baptized in Jesus' name. Isn't that great? Yes, sir. Then Simon himself also believed. The, the, the sorcerer, y'all, yeah. he believed. Isn't that great? Mm. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and was amazed seeing the miracles and signs which he had done. Now, this is the part that I've been in prayer for that I want to give you. And before I give it to you, I, I want to I wanna pull up something real quick, and I want to read something to you. Um, I want to I read something to you, um, or perhaps it may pop up. Um, hold on. So what I want to do is um, I, I, I want to I show you something. I want to explain something to you real quick while we sit here. As a matter of fact, let me talk to you and pull this thing out. Hallelujah. Let me pull this thing out. Let me just talk to you for a second. Cracking still. Okay, there we go. I, I want to talk to you real quick that the power of laying of hands, okay, the power of laying of hands. Amen. Understand this. Hope hopefully I'm back. Hopefully I'm back. Okay. Um, I want to I want to explain something to you that the laying of hands happens in the Bible, specifically in the Old Testament, on several occasions. The laying of hands, the laying of hands, the laying of hands um, were were given as a form of authority. A person who had authority had the ability to lay hands on an, another individual. This is what validated or qualified putting somebody in an office. This qualified um, giving somebody a blessing. You understand? Yeah. The, the laying of hands was was also a, a form of one authority being passed on to another person, giving them authority. Wow. We see this, we see this in Numbers, and we see this in Exodus, uh, where or in Joshua or in, in Exodus, where uh, uh, Moses, the prophet, lays hands on Joshua. He not only set him, gave him an office, but he gave him authority, and it was a blessing. So anytime you see somebody laying hands on somebody, it is, it is, it, 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 its meaning is that it is either a blessing, it is qualifying or putting somebody in an office, or is giving somebody some form of an authority. You're tracking. Amen. You're tracking. Yes, sir. That's what laying of hands do. If somebody lays hands on you, it's because they're blessing you or they're giving you authority. Right. Or they're are they're authorizing or putting you in an office or position. This is why you have to be careful of who's putting hands on you. Because some people don't have authority of God. They're giving you they're putting a different type of authority over you. Be careful who put their hands on you. 
The person who lays hands on you, you need to figure out who sent them. Come on, person. Because whoever sent them, they're giving you a blessing or authority or an office to send you. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Do you understand the power of laying of hands? Mm -hmm. You have to be someone of an authority to be able to do that. You have to be God's in God's authoritative individual to do that. It can't be done by anyone. Amen. You track it. Amen. So, so I'm not going to give you text. You guys got to go and research that. You can find that in Numbers 27, 15 through 23. Deuteronomy 34 and 9, you can, you can find those things. Now, I, I want I to I wanna show you this. You with me? You follow? I want to show you something. Go to, I, I'm going to come back here to Acts, Acts uh, uh, 8 and 14, but I want to go to, I want to go to Acts 6 and 6. I want to show you something. I think it's Acts 6 and 6. I want you guys to see this. Holy Spirit, help me now. Let's get them in here. Yeah. You guys in there? Hold on. Let me let me screw you. Let me get you up there. Let me cue you up. I'm liking this new program. <laughs> it's an upgrade, man. I IRL doing good. We doing good. <laughs> we doing good. All right. So I want you to see this. I'm in um Acts. Let's open this up. So I'm in Acts. Where am I at? Acts six and four. Okay, so it says, and saying, and and the same pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man of full of faith, and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, uh, Petrus, uh, Nicanor, Timon, Perminus, Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch, whom they set before the apostles, and when they had laid, and when they had prayed, they laid hands on them, right. Then the word of God spread and the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. The reason why I wanted to show you this text is because the apostles were looking for deacons. They were looking for deacons of the church who would who would do certain ser services so that the apostles can do can focus their time on some other things. And they found the individuals who they wanted to do it. And look what they did. They laid hands on them. The laying of hands was to give them authority, to give them a position, and to give them a and blessing them. You're tracking. Yes, sir. Now, let's go all the way to uh, Acts chapter 8, verse 14, right? So then it says, now, when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that, that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter, watch this, one Peter. They sent Peter and John, right? Mm -hmm. Who are who? What are Peter and John? Apostles. A who? Apostles. They are apostles. They have authority, right? Yes, sir. To them who, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. This baffled me. This baffled me that when Philip had gave them the gospel of Jesus Christ, why didn't they receive the Holy Spirit then? Philip, who was an apostle. Philip was not an apostle. He was a disciple, but he gave them the gospel. Mm -hmm. And it baffled me, and I, and, and I went into prayer. Lord, why is it that now when the apostles who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaritan had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them who when they had heard, excuse me, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. So what it looks like is that the Holy Spirit did not fall after they believed. And my question to the Lord is, what was the Holy Spirit waiting on? Hallelujah. I'm already getting crazy fired up. I'm already getting crazy fired up, fam. What is the Holy Spirit waiting for? Right? What you say? Uh, ooh, we about to get there. What? We about to find out some stuff. Right? We, we finna play with it. you. Got submission. Submission. Let's play with it. Right. Okay. So it says to the, 
who, who when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. So the, the, the apostles came down and prayed for them that they might receive it. Because it had come, it had happened to them, which is baffling, right? Yeah. For as yet he had fallen upon none of them. Why? But watch this. They all they had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now I want to stay here for a second. All right. They had only been baptized in the name of Jesus. Now I want to give you guys some understanding here real quick before you guys read ahead, which I know you already doing, which is fine, but you, but you ain't got revelation yet. So let me play with you. Right. Let me, let me, let me play with you. You ain't got revelation yet. <laughs> you ain't got revelation. So, so isn't it interesting that these guys believed it, but the Holy spirit didn't fall. Why didn't he fall yet? And I need you to understand a couple of things here. That the book of Acts is written by Luke. So Luke wrote the, a gospel, Luke, mm -hmm. and Luke also wrote Acts. Now, did you know that Luke was a companion of Paul? Yeah. Did you know that? Now, Paul, he already told us in Galatians that he was an apostle to the Gentiles, right. right? Did you know the book of Acts was written to a Gentile church? Theophilus. Theophilus is the recipient of both the gospel of Luke and the book of Acts. So the book of Acts is written to a Gentile church. I know it's blowing your mind. Why? Because did you know that Luke himself was a Gentile? You didn't know it. You did not know that. Wow. Luke was a Gentile. Wow. I mean, I feel like it makes sense since Paul. Was, Say it loud. He was a companion of Paul, so it makes sense. But also, Paul also had companions that were, were Jews. Jews. Barnabas, Barnabas was a was Jew. Jew. Right. So he had, he had, but he also had companions. That were co-laborers that was were, were that were not circumcised that were not Jews, and 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 Luke spoke fluent Greek. He was considered very intelligent. He was also a physician. So in his gospel, Luke, we see a lot of Christ's healings because he exercised medicine. Luke, isn't that cool? Yeah. Isn't that cool? So I need you to understand this, saints of God. When you're reading the gospel, any any gospel saints, whether it, or, or any 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 letter, anything in the New Testament, understand what is the writer trying to get us to see? Right. Because the writer is writing this years after the event has taken place. So the writer is not only giving us. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So the writer is not only given us eyewitness details, yeah. they're also given us a message. Mm -hmm. They're trying to convey to us a message that we as the hearers can take with us and we can also apply in our lives. Amen. They're not just telling us, but listen. They're all, but they're giving it to us for a purpose. And let me just, so let's unpack some revelation here. Hallelujah. Y'all tracking with me? Yes, sir. Uh, I ain't losing yet. Amen. So let me know. Let me know if you back up. Okay. Let's get that scripture back up. Get that scripture back up. All right. Now check it out. Now watch this. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Watch this. Then they laid hands on them. And they were received, and they received the Holy Spirit. I've said it again. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Let me give you the revelation that the Lord given me. This was is so important. I need you to give me. Uh, I think it's Matthew chapter twenty-two. Find me where where Jesus says. Uh, um, find me where Jesus. Um, says if you forgive them it will be forgiven and if you don't forgive them it will not be forgiven find that text 
Um, I think it's in Matthew. Um, I think it's in Matthew chapter 22, I think. But Google it. Um, the Bible says that in the name of the Lord Jesus, but then they laid hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. I need you to hear me now. The Samaritans. Let me give you, could it be? Could it be that the Samaritans who the Jews despised, this was a moment that, that if anybody tried to disprove that the Samaritans received the Holy Spirit, that it would be uh, voided because the, because John and Peter, by laying hands on these Gentiles, were approving, were validating, were qualifying that not just the Jews, but the Gentiles could also receive this gift, that they were also receiving a connection into the brotherhood. What, what once kept the Samaritans and the Jews divided that the Jews themselves had to come to create the connection. So could it be that the Holy Spirit was waiting for, for, the, for the apostles who God, Jesus Christ himself, gave the authority, watch me now, to forgive or not forgive sins. He gave them that authority because remember, Jesus... You follow. Because remember, Jesus told the apostles, as the Father has sent me, I'm sending you. So the same authority that I have or had or have, I'm giving you that authority. And I'm trusting you to use my authority the way that I would use my authority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And at this moment, that them by laying hands on them, showed that they were that they were giving them authority what happened that they were that they were passing on authority that they were passing on a position and that they were passing on a brotherhood a connection that at one time was strained mm. wow and it could only happen by the apostles Go and ask that question because I know you got it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so watch this. You, you follow. Y'all track it. Because yeah. I'm like, why did they have to wait for it? Right. Why did they have to wait the apostles? Did you find that text? Yeah. Where's that? It's actually Matthew 6. Matthew chapter 6. What does it say? For if you forgive men that trespasses, your heavenly father. No, no, no. Not that one. Not that, not, not that one. Uh, um, I think it's. Uh, let's find it. Let's find it. Okay. Let's find it. I, I believe it's where. Um, that's fine. That's all right. That's fine. I'll pull it up. It's in John 20, 23. Okay. So, that's all right. We got a patient church. They want to know. They want to know. All right. So, watch this. Watch this. So it, it, yeah, y'all can, can see me pull that up, right? Mm -hmm. So it says here, Jesus said to them again, peace to you as the father has sent me. Check me, saints. Y'all tracking? Uh -huh. Peace to you. Who are we talking to? The disciples. Talking to the disciples. Mm -hmm. It says, peace to you as the father has sent me. I also send you. You see, you see, you see the transit, you see the transition of power or authority. Because Jesus goes back to his original form as the right hand of the power, right? <laughs> right? So, so, so peace to you as the Father sent me. I send to I send you. And when he had when he had said this, he what he breathed on them. That's authority. He breathed. He breathed on that. That is a breath means spirit and soul. Man became a living soul. Mm. Mm. He breathed in the nostril and man became a living soul. Uh -huh. See, look at this. Yeah. 
he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Now watch this. That's power. He, he, that's the Holy Spirit is power. It's authority. It's our comforter. It is actually God in us. He says, I will make my abode in you. I, I will come to you. I am my father. He says, I am in my father and my father is in me and I am in you and you are in me. <laughs> the Holy Spirit is God in you. Now watch this. If you forgive their sins of any, they are forgiven them. And if you retain their sins of any, they are retained. This is an authority. Okay. Now I'm going to go all the way back to Acts. What was it? Acts 8. Yeah. Uh, Acts chapter 8, verses 17. 17. I tracked it. Yes, sir. I lost y'all already. Nope. Watch this. And they received the Holy Spirit. And when Simon saw that through the language, watch this. Watch this, 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 watch watch, 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 And when Simon saw that through laying, let me highlight it, because you can y'all see that on the screen? Yeah. So when Simon saw, this was the sorcerer, right? This is the sorcerer. When and when Simon saw that through the laying, the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given, he offered them money saying, give me this power also that anyone on whom I lay hands on hands may receive the Holy Spirit. So this is what you got to understand. Simon didn't care about having the Holy Spirit. He, no, no, no. He wanted authority. He wanted apostles authority. He wanted the apostles' authority, saints. Mm, wow. Listen, listen to what it says. Look, look at the text. It says, and when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, not laying on somebody who was saved hands. Wow. Y'all wow. tracking now. Wow. wow. He says, and when Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given. Mm -hmm. He offered them money, saying, give me this power also that anyone on whom I lay hands may receive the Holy Spirit. You got to understand, the Holy Spirit knows your heart. Yes, sir. How can you give the Holy Spirit and not receive the Holy Spirit? Say that again. How can you give the Holy Spirit but not receive the Holy Spirit? You understand? He, he didn't care about that. He only cared about the authority of the apostles. He wanted an apostle's authority. And this is what it says. I want to stay on the apostles. Go, 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 say what you no, said. No, 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 no. I, I, want, I want to stay on the apostle's authority because I want you to understand that people seek this authority. When I just showed you earlier that the qual I showed you Bible dictionary, not me, the qualifications of it. And it says, that anyone on whom I lay, he says, but Peter said to him, your money perishes with you because you thought that, thought that the gift of God could be purchased with money. You have neither part nor portion in this matter for your heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent therefore of this wickedness and pray if perhaps the thoughts of your heart may be forgiven. For I see that you are poisoned by bitterness. Mm -hmm. And I said this on Sunday, most of us are desiring the, this form of authority because we have been hurt, we've been tricked, we've been hoodwinked, we've been bamboozled. We've gone through certain traumas in our lives that we just don't want to be under authority. But the writer here is trying to show us the authenticity of, an, of the apostles here and how the Gentiles, <laughs> this is what I, the pastor wants to show you here, that the Gentiles, were approved that the Gentile, this is the part, the point I want to make to you, mm -hmm. that Gentiles were approved. They were validated. Word. They got hands laid on them. Word. They were approved by the apostles. So if anybody says that 
no, this gospel or whatever is not for the Gentiles. It was the apostles that validated it. It's right there in the text. Now watch this. Once that was done, the apostles did not have to lay their hands for the Gentiles to receive the Holy Ghost again. Let me show you. Go to Acts chapter 10. I I'm just so thankful because the Holy Spirit is so powerful. And if you're somebody who can't get some things in order in your life, things don't make sense. You feel like you're lacking authority and power in your life. I'm saying tonight, you can have the Holy Spirit. You can have him. If you, if, if, if all you got to do is ask him for it and he'll give it to you. He's a good, good daddy. He, so, some of us don't have things because we haven't asked for, for it. But he says, if you ask, I'll give it to you. Seeking, you should find. Knock and the door shall be open unto you. Amen. So I, look, there's some people in here that 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 that's desiring something. I can see some smiles on their faces. We, I, I sense Holy Spirit falling tonight in Jesus' name. Watch this. Watch this. It says. It says. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. I want you to go, okay, here we, I got it now. I got it now. So it says here, I'm in the wrong thing here. Act 10, I want to go all the way down here. Here we go. All right. All right. All right. So Paul or Peter meets a gentleman by the name of, uh, or, He's on his way to meet a, a gentleman by the name of Cornelius. He's a Gentile. He's an Italian. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And hallelujah. And the Lord comes to um, Peter and he, he needs to get him to get through some things first because Peter's a bit of a racist. He doesn't like anybody that's non-Jewish. Wow. And Jesus and God tells Peter in a dream, mm -hmm. he let down a bunch of food. And he says, kill and eat. A, a lot of animals kill and eat. And, and Peter t had the nerve to tell God, not so, Lord, for I have not never eaten or allowed anything unclean eat, touch my lips. And God says, don't, don't call what I have clean, unclean. He was referring to the Gentiles. So now we pick it up here. And Peter is now preaching. Then Peter opened up his mouth and said, in truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality. So now he's preaching. But in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. He's preaching, y'all. Yeah, yeah. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. He's preaching. You know which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus. So he's preaching, y'all. Right. So now watch this. I'm going to read this. Verse 43. To him, all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes, whoever believes in him will receive remission of sins. Amen. Watch this. While Peter, while Peter was still speaking these words, Peter wasn't laying hands on. Is he apostle? Yes, he is. Watch this. The Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished as many as came with Peter because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. Now watch this. The Holy Spirit fell on these Gentiles just from hearing the word. They believed it, and the Holy Spirit fell. Yeah. The, the Apostle Paul did not have to validate them to receive it anymore because the Gentiles, now it was now open to the Gentiles because the Apostles approved it. Yeah. What I'm saying is this. There's some things in our lives 
that kick that that are locked yeah. that are blocked yeah. because we haven't given authorization to unlock we haven't given the holy spirit full reign to have his way and we have some of us need to lay hands on ourselves some of us need to preach the gospel to ourselves so that we can unlock that divine gift that he come on pastor yeah yes but what you're doing is you're allowing your flesh to have authority. Mm. And watch this. Have been pulled out of Gentiles. Also, watch this. This is important. Yeah. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. This is important. The tongues and the, magnify, and, and the magnifying of God. This is important because this is something that the Jews need to see. Jews seek a sign. <laughs> yeah. The Greeks <laughs> seek wisdom. Yeah. 1 Corinthians 1 and, 1 and 22. Right? Yeah. So when they spoke in tongues, did they speak in tongues the same way they spoke in tongues in Acts 2? No. Because the way they spoke in tongues in Acts 2, the language they spoke, the people that were from other countries heard their own language. Right. So this wasn't the same tongue. Yeah. This was the unknown tongue. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So this was, but because they heard them speaking in tongues, that was the sign that the Jews needed to see to make them a believer. And when they saw it and they believed, Peter then said, the answer, can any forbid water that they should not be baptized? Be who have received the Holy Spirit just as we. They got it just the way we got it. Mm. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. And they and they asked him, him to stay a few days. I want to show you something. That here, they didn't need the laying of hands of, my, of the apostles. But Peter, the writer is showing us that Peter needed to see this. Mm -hmm. That the Holy Spirit is not just falling on Jews. But the Holy Spirit is also falling on the Gentiles. Peter, this was for Peter. Right, right, right. Yeah. You follow me? Yeah. You, you sure? I got you, you won't got it. I got you. <laughs> I got you. Peter was a racist. Yes. Yeah. This was the moment he needed to see that there is no favoritism in Christ. That's right. Christ is not partial to any gender or culture or race. He's not a respectful person. He's not a respectful person. That's right. I want to show you something. Now I want to show you something. And I, and I might be off this, but I'm not looking like oh, yeah, we are, we are way off time. Go to Acts chapter 19. I want to show you something. You're talking about apostles? Yes, sir. I want to show you something. I want to show you something that's very important. And this is this is revelation, family, because I want uh, the whole goal tonight I'm trying to show you is authority and how some seek authority because they seek authority. They don't want to. They don't want to have authority. They they seek authority for themselves. They don't want to submit to authority. Mm -hmm. They don't seek a leader. Um, they don't. They they seek to be the leader. They seek to be the authority. Right. Watch this. And and it happened while Apollos was at Corinth that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. Now Ephesus obviously is a a, a, a area in Asia Minor. It is a Gentile nation. And finding some disciples, he said to them. Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? Now, I need you to understand something here. I need you to understand something. Did you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit when you believed? Now, you have to understand that Paul is inferring that when you believe, you should be receiving it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. you, you track it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so he, so, so, did you receive the Holy Spirit? I'm gonna, I'm gonna highlight this word here. I'm reading from the New King James. Let me see if I can get the light up. 
Yeah, like that. Like, I don't know why it's not lighting up for me. I'm just gonna change the color. Change the color. Okay, anyway. Uh, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? Which implies that Paul believes when you believe, you should receive it. That's it. So they said to him, we had not so much as heard whether there be a Holy Spirit. They hadn't heard about it, y'all, because of what's the next verse about to say. They hadn't heard about it. He says, and said to them, and to what were you then baptized? So, so how, in other words, what makes y'all, what makes you all disciples? Right. What makes y'all disciples? What makes you followers? Right. So they said into John's baptism, which makes them John's disciples. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yep. So in other words, their belief. Their belief was on a half, was on half the information. Correct. 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 <laughs> right. Sorry. Their belief was on half the information. You got me? So let me change this up. Let me let me change this. Um, hold, on, hold, on. hold on. Stay with me, Saints. Stay with me. So y'all can still follow me. Y'all all right? So it was on half the information. So they said to him, John's baptism. So then Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, mm -hmm. saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is on Christ Jesus. In other words, this is what Paul's baptism represented. Mm -hmm. It represented the re for repentance for the remission of your sins. That's what it represented. Believe on the one that's coming after me. But it didn't, but but the other part was the death, burial, and resurrection that Jesus rose from the dead. Like that's the gospel, right? So watch this. When they heard this, they were then baptized in the name of the Lord. And watch this, y'all. When Paul laid hands on them, y'all see that? Yes, sir. The Holy Spirit came up on them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Now, let me stay here for a second. Wait a minute, Pastor. You told us that the laying of hands from Peter and Paul, excuse me, Peter and John was it, that the Gentile, it was open to the Gentiles. I did say that. But the writer here, Luke, mm -hmm. is trying to show us something here. He's He's qualifying Paul yeah. as the apostle. Yeah. Do you see it, saints? Yes, He's qualifying Paul as an apostle because only an apostle has the authority to be able to, to, to give license or authority to someone else or to give a position to somebody else or to give a blessing to somebody else. And the writer is trying to show us Paul's authenticity as an apostle. Wow. You're tracking? Yeah. Wow. Jeez. So Paul and the Holy Spirit came upon them and watch this. They spoke with tongues and they prophesied, which is good because it's showing us the writer here. Luke is showing us that, that the tongues obviously is for the Jews, right? In other words, the signs are for Jews and the prophecy, we're in, we're, we're in a Gentile nation mm -hmm. and, the, and the prophecy is for the Greeks. So these are the signs that we are, we are looking for depending on your faith. Mm -hmm. These are the indicators that we're looking for. We're looking for these indicators based on your faith because uh, um, um, those um, uh, signs are for those or tongues are for those or there are non-believers. Am I making that up? Tongues are for non-believers, 1 Corinthians 14, right? But the Greeks seeks, uh, seeks wisdom, right? Gentile seeks wisdom. So we're there. I wanted you to see this tonight. Let me take this off. Are we, are we cool here? Any questions here? No, we go ahead. All right, all right. Let me get out of here. Let me get out of here. Let me talk to you. This is so good. Let me talk to you, church. Amen.
Amen. Let me get out of here. This was so cool with this thing. <laughs> Let me talk to my church. All right. I kept y'all over time as usual. I apologize. <laughs> I wanted to show you some things as it relates to Paul's authenticity of being an apostle. But I also wanted to show you what an apostle meant. And I also wanted to show you some of the revelation of why the apostles needed to lay hands on those Gentiles mm -hmm. and what it meant, what it meant symbolically, what it meant figuratively, and what it meant spiritually. It was a connection that from one brotherhood connecting to another brotherhood, the thing that keeps us divided doesn't have to be anymore. Mm -hmm. We have a power, we have an authority that can bring us all together. So if you're somebody who is still dealing with unforgiveness, mm -hmm. lay hands on yourself mm -hmm. and plead the Holy Spirit. Say, just say Holy Spirit. If you're somebody that is still dealing with unclean spirits, mm -hmm. lay hands on yourself. The Holy Spirit, you have been given authority by the Holy Spirit to cast down devils. I would lay, lay your hands on yourself and say, in the name of Jesus, I cast out devils. In the Holy Spirit, I cast out fear. By the Holy Spirit, I cast down anxiety. By the Holy Spirit, I cast down doubt. In the name of Jesus, I cast down anything that is not of Christ. I have authority. God has given us this Holy Spirit, y'all. God has given us this Holy Spirit, and he's given us the power to overcome sin. If you're somebody that has believed God, but you haven't seen no power in your life, you haven't seen no fruit, and you desire the Holy Spirit, right now, I plead the blood of Jesus and I'm saying right now, if you really want the Holy Spirit, if you ask God for anything in his name, he said, he'll give it to you. He'll give it to you right there, right now, while you listen to sound my voice. If you want his precious gift, it's a gift and you don't have to work for it. I'm, listen to me. If you're working for it, it ain't a gift. If you want his Holy Spirit, all you got to do is open up your mouth and say, I want it. Give me this Holy Spirit. And if you pray that prayer, if you say those words, I know the Lord. I believe him and I trust that he'll give you what you say. But you got to ask him for it. You got to ask him for it. And if it's somebody that listens to the sound of my voice that already has the Holy Spirit. And you're seeking it for somebody else. We can pray <laughs> that the Lord opens up the hearts and mind for somebody else to have it. Because I'm telling you, you cannot make it without this thing. You can't fake it without it. Some of us think we can run around Christianity. We fake it, Christianity. You can't even fake it. You need the Holy Spirit to really live this thing. Don't be like Simon the sorcerer. Running around with bitterness, trying to lead a people. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is here. Church, IRL, is a Holy Spirit-filled church. We are a revelatory church. The Lord gives revelation in this church. And the Holy Spirit is in that place. And if you want his power, if you want his authority, ask him. You don't need a title. <laughs> you don't need a title. You don't need to pay for it. You don't have to pay for it. You just have to ask for it, and he'll give it to you. 
If you're somebody that desires it, I just want to pray with you right now. And 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 you might be asking me, Pastor, how will I know I had it? I have it. Oh, you gonna know. <laughs> Pastor, how I know I got the Holy Spirit. Oh, you gonna know because you're gonna have an experience that's gonna be almost impossible to explain, and only those who have the Holy Spirit will understand. So I'm telling you right now, I want to pray this prayer with you for you all who are desiring the Holy Spirit. Or if you're desiring, you know, you have the Holy Spirit. But you don't see no fruit. You don't see no power. I want to pray with you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for this moment. Father, this moment is all yours. It's all yours, God. And Lord, we need your Holy Spirit. Just running around just saying that I'm a Christian ain't going to fly. Just running around saying I believe in God just won't fly, Lord. Lord, we need your gift and we need truly faith in Jesus Christ that you both lived, died, and rose again for us. But we have to believe on your name, Father, and believe that you have a gift that comes with that package of believing. There's a package that comes with believing on your name. And Lord, we're asking right now that you open up that package. You, you help us to open up that gift. Give us this gift, God, of the Holy Spirit. Right now, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we're touching and agreeing. We're given the right hand of fellowship to whomever that needs your gift. That we are in agreement of this gift, Lord. Release your gift, Lord, upon your, upon your sons and your daughters and your young men. Hallelujah. And your men and your female servants. Lord, Lord, unlock your gift, God, in the name of Jesus. We desire it, Daddy, and we thank you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you, saints. If you if you have a moment, we still, looks like we still have you there. Um, for those who have it on their hearts to give, you already know. Please put in the comments for me. You already you already did it. <laughs> you already know that um, that this ministry runs off your love. This ministry runs off of your heart. This ministry runs off your passion. This ministry runs off your faithfulness. Without those things, this ministry can't move. It can't grow. So it needs, in it, it, this ministry solicits your love. If you love this ministry and you want to give love right now, please give. And we thank God for you and your gifts in this ministry. I want to pray one last prayer before we go. Are there any questions about anything, y'all? That was deep. That was deep. Any any questions about anything uh, you guys have, might, might have, just throw it in the comments. I don't mind rapping to you a little bit. I know it's late, but I, I love rapping to you. I love talking to you. Any any questions? You see any questions on there? Any questions? Any comments? Any concerns? Anything that you got from tonight? Yeah, I'll give him a second. You have a, a greater understanding of what apostle is. You have a greater understanding of what um, of what Luke, of what the laying of hands means, right? You have a, another a greater understanding of what laying of hands mean. Um, we have a greater understanding of, of uh, the Holy Spirit, man. Like, isn't it amazing that the Holy Spirit loves us so much? That it appears that, uh, you know, just just the way he moves, you can't trick the Holy Spirit, yo. No. He know when you really believe. Oh, I believe the Lord. I know. All right. <laughs> he know your heart, and it's good to see somebody who really surrenders to Jesus Christ. To see that the Holy Spirit hits them uh, instantaneously, right? Uh, instantly and. Uh, he just wants your heart. 
not the heart for your pastor, not your heart for that leader, not your heart for that title, not that heart for that gift. Your heart's got to be for Jesus. And if you give him your pure heart, he'll give you a gift. He'll give you some authority. And the things that you're battling with won't be battles. You will put you will put them things in headlocks and you'll put it in submission. You will tell them devils where they need to go because you have authority in Christ Jesus. Any questions? They leaving me alone tonight. I love y'all, man. <laughs> y'all ain't got nothing. Y'all good? Let's pray. Let me get home to my precious, wonderful wife. <laughs> Father, in the precious name of Jesus, God, we thank you for the love that was given today. We thank you for those that were able to give. Father, we thank you for the revelation that you passed down to us so that we may have a greater appreciation and understanding of your word. But we thank you for the authority that you've given us through the Holy Spirit. That, Lord, we don't have to uh, allow some man or woman to be our Lord. But Lord, we know who our God and our Lord is. But we thank you for the the presbytery, the presbytery, Lord, the, the pastors that you've given us after your own heart to help be a sign, a gift to lead us and direct us and guide us, Lord, to you. Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus, God. Right now, God, we pray for those who are in leadership, who are leading your people astray. Father, we ask that you give them a Pauline experience, a Paul experience, Lord. You knock them off their horse, knock them off their animal, God, and show them the light so that they may lead your people back on the path of righteousness. Father, I rebuke right now, Lord, anyone that preaches anything other than the Holy Spirit. And Father, we ask that your gospel is the thing that remains in our hearts and our minds until you come. It's in Jesus' name we pray. We thank you. We thank you, y'all. Thank you for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for receiving Jesus. Thank you for receiving your pastor tonight. I pray that you, uh, you, you, you leave with revelation, understanding, knowledge, how to walk out this thing, how to live this thing. And not how to be, and, and understand not to be deceived. For there are false prophets that are out there. But make sure you stay true to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Get in your word, study, show yourself approved unto God. A workman need not be ashamed, rightly dividing this word of truth. I love you. Go and study this thing. I'll see you all this Sunday. Can't wait. God bless you.